Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, December 14th, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Take a look at the halo coronal mass ejection. In fact, it was the largest solar flare that we've seen since September of 2017, an X 2.87 coming off of an active region as it is departing on the limb here. Now, there is evidence that it is going to hit Earth in about two days, and it's right here. It was a halo ma coronal mass ejection, and that means a portion of it is heading directly at us. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snow totals from across New Mexico. Angel Fire saw 14 inches Sipapu, 14 as well, and Ski Santa Fe saw a foot of the global warming goodness. Really good news for the snowpack there. And Vail Mountain opens the back bowls after reaching 90 inches of snow for the 2022-23 season. Chair 5 enjoys the earliest opening since 2019. Florida braces for possible tropical storm-like conditions this weekend with rain, flooding, and severe weather. Numerous flood and wind alerts have been posted across the Sunshine State through the weekend, and preparations are underway in coastal communities as they brace for beach erosion as they continue to recover from storms such as Hurricane Ian. And coastal areas are already seeing gusty winds and dangerous surf ahead of the severe weather. We will take a look in just a moment. As we're monitoring trends for storm development this weekend, heavy snow will slowly subside across the southern Rockies, snowing now in the panhandle of Oklahoma and northern Texas, the next of Shmexis. And that will come to an end as severe weather then develops as it moves east. Energy from that system is forecast to develop a storm system in the Gulf of Mexico and track northward along the east coast this weekend. A major nor'easter with heavy rain, a few thunderstorms, increasing winds are in the forecast. Meanwhile, strong northeast winds will affect Hawaii through Friday alongside dangerous high surf. So heed the warnings and stay out of the Pacific. Here is that system now that just moved through Colorado and New Mexico, wreaking havoc on, in North Texas and the panhandle of Oklahoma. It's going to quickly switch over to some severe weather as more severe weather rumbles in the Gulf, and it's going to quickly intensify. These two storms will meet and make a run right up the coast there early in the week. There's your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday and that will be your fun day in the Northeast. The back end of this, it's going to be cold and snow for many regions, especially those along the lakes. Now, El Nino appears to be on the verge of rapid collapse. When sea surface temperature anomalies reach 0.5 C or warmer than is typical, we get an El Nino. But the El Nino is ap apparently coming rapidly to an end. Let's show you some of the models here. They're all showing that by... Uh, March, April, May, we could be entering the neutral zone. And definitely by April, May, June, most of the models are lining up that the El Nino will be done definitely by the beginning of summer. What a bummer. But it means we will be deep in the El Nino for at least three, four months all the way till, let's say, April. So we could see some heavy snows all the way out through the spring, ding, ding, and then the system may go neutral. Oh, and we can show you one more chart over here, the probability of El Nino conditions based on those models we just saw. The seasonal probability, we're going to stay high in El Nino at least through February, March, April, and then it's going to rapidly drop off March, April, May, April, May, June, and then by May, June, July, it's looking like, well, and so neutral. And Anchorage is seeing the snowiest year ever. Heads up, Alaska. Must be the global warming. Oslo's new electric buses are paralyzed by the extreme cold up there in uh, Scandinavia. Now, Anchorage's snowiest year ever. The foot that walloped Anchorage, Anchorage on Tuesday, which led to road closures in the city schools, shifted to remote learning. According to National Weather Service data, Tuesday accumulations took the city to a new record for the snowiest year to date since at least when records began being kept in 1953, with 58.7 inches clobbering the 1996 record of 56.5 and so on and so forth. Seismic update. 
No quakes of note. We did, well, actually a few. We did have a big explosion up here in Oregon today, 2.8 magnitude explosion. And Guatemala and Mexico are rumbling on that plate boundary. Seismic update. Oh, worldwide. We'll get a news update. Krakatau in the Sunda Strait continuing to rumble. Powerful eruptions continue. Only puffing and passing to 4,000 feet, though. San Gay to 20,000. Reventador to 15. Fuego, 15,000 feet. And Krakatau back on the map. Nothing else of note today. Except as we move over to space weather news, there is that amazing X2.87 solar flare. Slightly impulsive, but it did last a bit and did produce a major coronal mass ejection. Here we are on the loop taking a look at the amazing display of power. Wow. And that is the largest solar flare since September of 2017 and the last solar cycle. Now, what will the effects be? That's the big question. The models have been sparse, but here we are looking at the stereo ahead, Core 2 chronograph, and there is definitely a halo coronal mass ejection, and that means there will be a geomagnetic storm headed our way in a day or so. Here we are looking at the ISWA model, and it is showing it missing us, but I don't believe that's the case. Over here at the WSA Enlil Spiral, they have not updated it with the X flare. It's only showing the M flares, and with those alone, it is showing enhanced geomagnetic activity for the 15th, 16th, through the 17th, which, if this is a fast-moving X flare, will cannibalize both of these, and they may all arrive at the same time on the 16th or the 15th. So stay tuned for tomorrow's update to get a clearer picture on what we're looking at in uh, the near future. We'll come over here to take a quick look at the three-day geomagnetic forecast. And it is showing KP5 for December 16th. This is going to change because of the X-flare, the strongest solar flare of the current solar cycle. And here you can see that occurring just hours ago earlier today. Amazing stuff happening from the sun. It is solar max, and it should be expected. But as usual over at the Soho Movie Theater, they stopped the action at 1,500 UTC right before that X flare. So here are the other solar flares that are headed our way that will bring enhanced geomagnetic activity in a day or so. And stay tuned tomorrow for more updates on how the aurora will play out. Going to be some good stuff coming soon. Take a look at this picture. Beautiful. This image was provided by NASA in July of 2023. It shows the Rho Ophiuchi cloud complex, the closest star-forming region to Earth, captured by the James Webb Space Telescope. Absolutely spectacular. Let's blow this up. Why not? We've got time. Let's take a look in a little bit more detail. Wow. Beautiful. NASA's web identifies the tiniest free-floating brown dwarf. Yeah, just floating out there, a planet in the middle of nowhere. Well, actually, a, a, a small star, similar to our sun, only maybe slightly smaller. Now, brown dwarfs are objects that straddle the dividing line between stars and planets. They form like stars, growing dense enough to collapse under their own gravity, according to the fairy tale. But they never become dense and hot enough to begin fusing hydrogen that turns them into the, a star. Well, probably that's not what's happening. But these brown dwarfs are floating on Birkeland currents in very lonely ways, similar to the polar configuration suggested by the Thunderbolts project with Saturn and the likes of Earth and Venus and Mars. Go check it out. All the links will be below. Al Gore warns people having access to non-mainstream information threatens democracy. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He's complaining. Anyway, Al Gore says that people having access to information outside of the mainstream media is a threat to democracy and that social media algorithms ought to be banned. Well, I think Al Gore's Nobel Peace Prize should be stripped from him and he should be put in jail. But in the meantime, no bunt cake for Al. Mars' atmosphere swelled like a balloon when solar winds stopped blowing. Scientists are thrilled. It's been really been one-of-a-kind event. 
Here is an artist rendering of a solar storm hitting Mars and stripping ions from the planet's upper atmosphere. Absolutely spectacular. Mars' atmosphere once was as thick, if not thicker, than Earth's, according to some scientists, but it is now leaking into space. About 0.25 pounds of Mars' atmosphere is pushed away every second by the incessant solar wind. Well, Mars, bad news, Elon. Did you get the memo? The link will be below. I hope Elon's watching. Unusual boxes and a 7,000-year-old trove has been found locked in ice, along with obsidian that dazzles scientists in Canada. One of nine ice patches releasing objects from 6,200 to 5,300 years ago, located right there in northern Canada, which is known for its blustery, dramatic landscape and plentiful ice, but with the unprecedented thaw in Canada's Mount Edzaiza Provincial Park in the past few years, objects began emerging from ice, like this giant obsidian blade probably used for killing mammoth 7,000 years ago. So maybe there was still some mammoth here up on the step. In my opinion, this is a gigantic blade. I have no idea what you would use that for. Not only that, there were stitches evident in a birch bark container from about 2,000 years ago. Take a look at that. Fantastic. And here, an ice pick carved from an antler was radiocarbon dated to around four to 5,000 years ago. Cool stuff, including a wooden walking staff with a beveled top found on the surface of melting ice near Goat Mountain Peak. Now, this walking stick was carved 4,000 years ago. Mind-blowing. More mind-blowing is researchers have fused lab-grown human brain tissue with electronics in the first cyborg ever created. Oh, my God. In just a few years, it's going to become very dystopian on Earth. In a story ripped from the opening scenes of a sci-fi horror movie, scientists have bridged the critical gap between the biological and the electronic. The study published in Nature Electronics, summarized in Nature, details a hybrid biocomputer. And here's the paper. Brain Organoid Reservoir Computing for Artificial Intelligence. Absolutely chilling. Now, by combining lab-grown human brain tissue with conventional circuits and AI, dubbed BrainOware, the system learned to identify voices with 78% accuracy, and it could one day lead to a very creepy cyborg future. I can't wait. How about you? And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow band. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Hit that thumbs up. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm. No bun cake for Al. Be safe. And that's a boom. Mm -hmm.